All right, uh, should we get started? Today is, it's just going to be us folks. Uh, I think I mentioned already, but you may not have heard this, Jeff, but uh, Beth is in Australia, and Art's running around the Mediterranean someplace. I don't know where he is. So it's just- well, it's not warmer than here. It's warmer than here. <laughs> here. Not more pleasant here, I can imagine. But anyway, uh, it's just us. I have some uh, good news and some bad news. The bad news is that Beth has and yeah, that means we got four openings. Right? I'm sorry, that means we got four openings. All right, we got four openings. That's right. Uh, yeah, four openings. And the good news is we've got six applicants. And is that right, Melanie? That's what you said the other day. It, it was um, after review, uh, um, the um, it, it was reached to five. Oh, well, that's still, we'd still have enough to fill the vacancies. If they're all there, we'd have an alternate. Yeah. Uh, okay. Jeff, we yes. brought that up I don't, think can, that was really I don't know if we can do that. We need to verify what we used to have that, but we moved the, the alternate to an actual board seat. So I don't know if we're allowed to have that 10th person. So if, if we do, that would be a whole council thing we need to go. So I got to take that as a no. I know. Yes. I, I, I All right. Well, right. I'll call the, the meeting to order. Uh, roll call. I, oh, we don't have a secretary for that. Is she coming? This She's morning? coming. Yeah. Well, I guess we can go generally. Just go so ahead. we have uh, two uh, two people with excused absences. Absences. Does everybody? Do you have any extra copies of the agenda? So I can understand. I'm sorry. Our printer is down right now. Oh, your printer's down. Yeah. Just out of water. <laughs> um, they they had uh, ETSF tech support to come in and take a look at that. And I get a copy this morning. Yeah. Oh, it's it's not working. <coughs> Nothing is working. Oh, no, the copy is not working. The copy is not working. The whole machine is down. Oh, oh. Okay. Well, we can share this if you, if you like. Um, oh, I kind of memorized. <laughs> but not the notes. <laughs> no, and I, I didn't memorize it. You have 15 minutes to look at it. Everybody, I, I assume everybody's had an opportunity to review the agenda. Are there any uh, additions to the agenda? No. 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 I, excuse me. No. I have one I would like to add under new business. I can see the election of the secretary. That would only take a couple of minutes. Uh, but I think we need to talk about that. All right, that's the only addition. Okay, I'll have a motion to uh, to accept the agenda. So moved. Second, Lonnie. All right, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All right, public, do you have anything you wanted to say this morning? No. Okay. But thank you for asking. Okay. All right. Yeah. Board goals. Um, so did we do the minutes? I'm sorry. Oh, the agenda. Where's the agenda? Oh, the minutes. Sorry, it's all I always miss the uh, minutes. Are there uh, any corrections or additions to the minutes? Some thoughts. Um, so I'm I'm thinking that when um, when we do this, that under the roll call thing, that we also need to have a thing that says excused, and then Dave Brown would have been on that last time, right? So yeah. like this time, it would be Beth and. Art okay. that we need to, and then that way it accounts for the board members. Yes. Yeah. Uh, if they're yeah. not here, then they are. I get yeah. That's, a, that's a good. Point. And then the other thing, because I'm assuming that you were not on Zoom last time. I was not. Okay. So there's a couple of places where the minutes lists Dave's name, um, and I think really it probably should have been Art or uh, Jeff. Okay. And one of them is C under outreach update, and the other one is E under items from the board. Other than that, is that C and E? C uh, and under reports. Uh, eight items from the, items from the board. Very actually, much. actually, that was. Me. Are you talking about this this one right here, David yeah. and Beth? That actually was me. You actually did talk. I did talk to Beth. We had a, we had a meeting between the two of us, and we were talking about. Oh, okay. okay. So okay. That, that actually, that's correct. Okay, that's okay. so C is right. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. What about the number eight? The other one I have is eight. The very last one, item three and four. Items for the board. Yeah, it says Dave will invite Friends President to attend the next election. I think that is actually that is that is actually going to do yeah. that. Too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, all this by my I didn't do that. So okay. Uh, excuse other, excuse yes. me. Did you um, contact Mendel? I, I haven't actually talked to them. Though. Okay. Um, do you mind? I okay. I, I guess I can talk about that right now as part of the corrections. Um, that is accurate. I, I was going to contact Linda, but. Uh, I was sick last time, and then there was another vacancy, uh, another absence. I think. Anyway, I wanted to be here when Linda was here, so that was one reason. And then the other reason is I found out that then Beth called and said she was resigning. And I thought, why have Linda here with four of us? You know. So I thought, let's wait until after the first of the year to get everybody on board, the new board members and everything, and then we'll have Linda uh, come at that point. So if that's okay, I'll just invite her in January. That's why I didn't ask. Any other corrections or additions to the minutes? So there are those are suggested corrections, and there are no corrections. Yeah, so there it actually was accurate. Okay. Did you want to sit up at the table? This is actually better for me, but thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Those. Uh, I'll have a motion to accept the minutes. Uh, Lonnie and uh, second. I'll second. Uh, Arlene. All those in favor of uh, accepting the minutes say aye. 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 All right. Uh, every time I miss the minutes for some reason. Okay. Public invited to be heard. Old business. All right. This is uh, okay. Then uh, board goals. Does that? Does anybody have anything under board goals? Yes. I have a question. We've been going back and forth about what the goals of the board are. We have housing, we have transportation, and we have outreach. But I looked back on minutes for another reason and saw we actually also have mental health. Yeah. Did any, do we, are we gonna pursue that or have we dropped that? Well, I guess that's a good question. Uh, about three meetings ago, we talked about, might have been before you started, how long have you been on the board now? Um, since August, since August, July. I guess it was since, um, anyway, we. I think it was the first time, I, the first notes I took to yeah, myself, so yeah. when you said mental health. We didn't have a motion, but I thought we accepted the ordinances as statement of goals. Say that again. The, the ordinance creating the, the, uh, the uh, advisory board would be our statement of goals. If you're all looking at me like, what? Yeah. Okay. So, that was okay. On All right. Uh, hang on just a second. So you're saying what's in in the charter? Yes. Municipal code. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I, I handed this out a couple of times, a couple of meetings, and we can we can do something different. But that that was my uh, understanding. Okay, under the powers and duties, it says, item uh, paragraph D. There, there's, well, actually, I'll go through the whole thing. The powers of the board shall be advisory to the city council, and the board shall have the following duties to establish recommendations for guidelines and policies facilitating the most beneficial and productive use of the senior center. B, to review budget requests relating to senior centers and programs. C, to otherwise serve as a liaison between the city council and community of senior citizens in matters of public interest as determined by the board or, uh, or council. And then, to me, this is the big thing, to report annually in writing to the city council concerning the operation of the senior center and relating to matters of current participation at the close of the calendar year, the financial aspects of the center, maintenance and condition of the facility, and any other matter being prudent to report on upon request of the council or the initiative of the board. And so that's that's what I, I had it out really about two or three times. And uh, that, that, that's what I thought we could use as the uh, statement of goals. Now, if, if 
that's not okay, fine, let's talk about that. <clears throat> I just have a question about, I think it's B, the thing about the finance and appeals. Review at budget requests. What exactly is that going to entail? Because I don't know how much info we really have on the budget. Well, <clears throat> well th this year, the, the board invited the city manager <coughs> to come and talk. We actually had a meeting over at the Lashley's train station and he kind of summarized what uh, he thought the, for my word, <coughs> the, the state of the city and the opportunity uh, that, that you all might have to get things in the budget. And uh, I think ultimately, jump in here, Ronnie, um, the, the senior <coughs> did quite well with getting the new uh, recreation coordinator, as well as uh, funding for some temp <coughs> to be able to expand hours. Did I miss anything? No. Okay. okay. So, so you all did have that impact. <coughs> Unfortunately, it was before uh, Arlene and, and Monty that the two of you were uh, on the board. That happened. I think it was at the. April or uh, May, right, yeah. April or May. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> so I, I, I think the, the input that you all have is, is through conversations that we have all, all year long like and giving uh, Ronnie and I feedback on, on <coughs> what we think priorities are. And then we carry those, uh, those things forward in the, in the budget requests. Okay. So, so then it isn't because I was concerned that it's not us actually going line to line. No. The budget yeah, it's so. just giving it, giving. Okay. Yeah. But you know, yeah. you know, and <clears throat> I agree with everything that Jeff said. Uh, just said, mm -hmm. but I have a little bit different twist. See, I see it as part of our responsibility to to, to take a good look at the budget. We don't need to do it line by line. Right? You know, we we don't know all of the factors that go into that. But if we're thinking of a program, if we're thinking you need certain staff, I think that we should make recommendations you know, in our best judgment as far as what the budget should include. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, um, I'll get probably you were the two most recent officials were on the board. You talked about the budget timeline. Um, so there's a, a period of time in February and March when um, ultimately, I think it's you, Ronnie, that puts requests, budget requests into the tool, right? And the time for board or oversight um, is then, before he even starts that process. You know, what are you, gonna, what are you thinking about, Ronnie? Or based on the findings of the board through the year, um, what budget items could go there? So, um, for example, we could have really talked about keeping the facility open later um, for different hours when we were down in so many positions. But maybe next year, if it's a good year, we can. We can talk about evening staff, we can talk about evening hours for recreation, which would be a really good thing for um, uh, getting the you know 55 to 65 still working seniors involved with the center so that you would have strength going forward. That's just off the top of my head an example, but those are budgetary items that the board could recommend on. But it's it's something that we plan for early spring. Is that does that answer your question, Lonnie? And is it sufficient? You know what? I actually jumped the gun now that I'm looking at all this because the next thing says updates. No. And these are the three things, housing, transportation, and outreach. Mm -hmm. And what I'm saying is that there was a fourth and it was mental health. Still. And we never got anybody to, to accept that. Does everybody remember that? Yeah, no, I, I, I do. We talked about mental health. As a matter of fact, I, I brought it up. Okay. I think we're, so like what, others. And then as people chose what they wanted, I take housing, you take transportation, nobody ever did mental health. Well, are we going to continue with that and maybe get somebody on that? Or are we going to put that aside for now? Well, I think it, 
I think the consensus was, we didn't have a motion on it, but I think the consensus was, we've only, we've got a small board, right. and we can't, we can't blow their people up too much. Right. Mental right. health would, would be a big one. You know, I, I think it's just as important as the others, but <coughs> it's, it's, it's extra work, you know? So, so maybe we can do that. I agree with you. Yeah. With the, the current size of the board, and even going on into next year, yeah. it's going to make it difficult to okay. right. give people more things to do. Right. Yeah. Arlene, did you have more? No, you know? I, I agree. I remember that, that we just set on those three because of the size of the board. Yeah. As we add to it, though, those people are going to need some time to put their feet on the ground before they can. I think, I think we've got our hands full of just those yeah, things. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Sheila and I have been attending meetings with various um, groups, and I kept saying to her, I think there was a fourth. I swear, I think there was a fourth. And that was the time where that came from. But I'm not advocating that we add it right now. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I totally understand that we need to get our board, you know, our new people on their feet and, and knowing what's right. going on before we introduce right. that. But. Yeah, I, I, I think mental health is critical, but not right yeah. now. Okay, good. That's fine with me. Okay. Uh, let me, I was, I, before you came in, we were talking about uh, uh, under board goals, whether we had a conversation, the three of us had a conversation about maybe using the Lashes Translation. And uh, Art and Beth have been talking about a, a, an approach, and I, I agree with that, so I'd like to lay that out. So I could talk it under board goals, or I could talk for old business, I should say, or I could talk about it under um, uh, outreach, but I'm going to lay it out now because it might it might impact what you guys think. Yes, can I ma ask a question and maybe um, Ronnie or Jeff can answer this. Yeah, um, or oh, probably Marsha. Um, open meetings have to be open to the public if there are more than a certain number of board members discussing board business. And I don't know what that number is. Um, it's it's two. Um, if it's only three, you don't have to post it, but you have to hold it in a public place where people could walk in and join the conversation. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's what the rule is. So if you want to have a board committee, um, three of you could meet at Ziggy's. Yeah. Um, uh, if you're going to do it regularly, you should probably ask that it be posted, even if it is only three. And should, should it be posted if it is only three? Well, I, I, I again, for a, a one-off, I think probably that's yeah. it's not necessary. If it's if it's a recurring meeting of three, then I think you should. Okay. But that's just to be if the law doesn't say that. Okay. And where would it be posted? Oh, um, you go to the city or the city Ronnie, manager's Ronnie. office, and they she puts it in the. Yeah. Right. Ronnie would do that for them. Oh, I don't know. Goes on the city website. On that, okay. um, our agenda is not at the civic center. I'm sorry. Our agenda is not posted at the civic center, along Isn't with it? everybody else's agenda. Uh, that board. that's surprising because they have been responding to emails saying that. It, that it was so um, maybe yeah. it maybe it got missed this month but normally we'll we'll make sure that that happens but just just for the the primary posting location is on the city's website under agenda management mm -hmm. that is that is all all boards and, and councils a location to the official place to post on their agendas and packets so I have a question. Yes. When you're talking about Lashley, are you talking about having these meetings at Lashley? No, let me get into that. Uh, is there any more on this item? Okay, let me let me get into this. This is something that uh, Beth and I have talked about, Art and I have talked about, Art and Beth have talked about, but <laughs> not, not the three of us have any of it in front of me. Um, we're thinking that, and this is, this, some of this is not new, you know, this is not, this is, some of this is okay. But the Lashley Street Station is available. We could use the Lashley Street Station. Everybody know where that is, what it is? Okay, I didn't, so. Everybody knows what that is. Uh, that is available Tuesdays and Thursdays from eight to three o'clock. Is that right? Okay. So that, uh, we don't necessarily have access to that, but there would be, that would be times that we would be able to use it. 
we were thinking, why couldn't we use it as kind of an outreach station? And uh, we thought we could start by, uh, for, for the uh, Hispanic community, focusing on the Hispanic community. It doesn't have to be just them, but the focus is on the Hispanics. That is an area of town that I understand where the Hispanics are concentrated more than other areas of town, so it's a logical site. I went over there yesterday and I just looked in the windows because it was all locked up and they've got two big conference rooms. I don't know, do they have office office rooms back on the side or is it just conference rooms? It's just the two, one, one room that can be split into two and one. Okay, um, it looks like they've got a kitchen, a kitchen space. Kind of there. So it'll be just a couple of big conference rooms. But anyway, that, that's a start. We did talk about this last time. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Well, that's why I'm, I'm kind of picking up from where Art, Art left off. Art said, why don't we have a, far, a focus group? Or he didn't say, I don't think he said focus group. He said, but why don't we get some people from the Hispanic community? It's better to get them together and talk face to face than it is to talk to an individual. I think he said something like that. I thought it was a great idea. And so I talked to uh, Art before he took off to the Mediterranean. And I, I think he agrees with this. And I think Beth agrees with this. She was big on using the station. And so what we could do is Art and there's your, your staff member is, what's her name again, Pina? You're a volunteer, not yes. your staff, you're a volunteer. Yeah, yeah. yeah she but would be willing to work with us, I understand, with the Hispanic community. And the idea would be to get representatives from the, the Hispanic community, not through the center, but through Pina's connections, arts connections, and other people within the community, and maybe have a meeting over at the, uh, at the Lashley Street. <coughs> and the idea would be to, what is it that the Hispanic community wants in the way of services and, uh, and or programs? I think, to me, services are more important than programs, but anyway, just leave it open. What do they want? And then, I don't know how long that would take, but once we do that, then we could bring that back and make some suggestions to this group as far as how we might approach that in terms of services, programs, staffing, implementation, all of those kinds of things. And if we, if what I'm saying is we put together kind of a pilot project you know, for that purpose. And then that would be our recommendation next March to the city council and we'd probably be good to talk to Harold about it before, you know, so he's on board with it. And then uh, after that, we make a recommendation to the city council and that would, that would be our work, you know, as far as that particular part. And I'm thinking we could do the same kind of thing with housing, transportation, and anything else we might want to do. Anyway, that, that's one approach. What do you think? Yes. I have to say I find it not offensive, but, and this isn't directed at you, this is directed at the public at large, but you know, what do they want? As if people who are Spanish speaking or described as Hispanic by themselves or the city are just one big group. That they're all the same. Well, I didn't mean to. No, know. I know, I know you didn't. And right. I think what you're saying is generally a good idea. But I think we have to be. I think we have to be a yep. little more receptive of the idea that the let's say the Hispanic or the Spanish-speaking community has as many different goals and backgrounds uh, as. We, the Anglo's, the white people, do. Um, and I think that's something that we should keep in the back of our minds when we are doing well, I think it's a good idea to put you on, but what you suggested, but yeah. it just is something that. Well, well I didn't say at least what, what is your kind one. I'm sorry? <laughs> what is your kind one? Uh, okay, so I, I go along with, with what she's saying. I guess my. My thing is, we talk so much about inclusion that I don't see this really as, as an inclusion, and I'm trying, trying to, in my mind, figure out how 
how we can pull the Spanish community in with us. This almost sounds like it's kind of a separate thing. How do we, how do we, and yes, they're different, <coughs> sort of like we're doing with the Iraq Valley tribe. You know, we're, we're trying to get in with them as far as the elders go, and I'm thinking, that's, I, I think that's kind of the way we need to go, is that we need to all be, we need to learn from them, and then, they, you know, they, they can maybe learn something from us. I know, I, I was really, yeah. really influenced by uh, Carmen, that's Carmen's last name. Well, yes, she's, 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 anyway, she, she said we need to be incremental. You know, we need to pick a little piece and try to, we, we don't have the trust or respect and all that, uh, you know, for them to come in. And so we need to do something a little piece at a time to, to gain their trust, to do something that's successful and build it that way, to, to build it rather than say, <laughs> what do these people want? You know, you don't do that. You know, well, you're told this is what you want and I'm giving it to you type of thing. Yeah. 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 Yes. So I just wanted to hear everybody's thoughts on that piece, but we already have this already in motion. Um, with our new position that has been you know, funded for January, starting January, allows um, current staff member value to focus on building our Spanish program. So uh, we we're going to be very intentional with that, meaning going slow, like Carmen say, right? So we already have a plan in place to not only grow the Spanish program, but being intentional with that. So with that, having these focus groups that you're talking about, being able to survey our current uh, Latino customers, right? Uh, have have the bring them to the table of we want to grow Spanish programs. What would you like to see? What would you like to see more of? What do we not offer that we can have? Um, and, and having those same conversations outside of customer, or, or you know, the Latino community outside of those who currently come to our facility, right? Um, that allows that allows her to build the trust that you're talking, that, that Carmen was talking about. Again, these recommendations from our board are fantastic, right? Um, but we need, we need a staff member inside doing that work, building those relationships, building that trust, having those conversations so we can slowly grow our Spanish programs. Uh, when I say intentional, can we easily turn around and say, okay, we're gonna offer 10 more Spanish programs? Absolutely, right? We don't know, number one, that's what their needs are. So we need her to be part of those conversations, having those meetings, okay? Um, so that, that is part of our, our, our growth plan as we move into 2024. Um, I'll, I'll say it again, it's being intentional in growing our Spanish programs through those conversations and relationship building. Um, with that, uh, lastly, you know, it's, it, we do have availability there. We in 2024, starting in December actually, are moving that to our on-site location for, for, for trips. So um, when we have, have all of our day trips, it's going to take place at Lashley, so that'll be the check-in point for for check-in and, and drop uh, check-in vehicle. Um, I have to miss transportation. Sorry, transportation pick up and drop off. So we're shifting that outside of this facility to that location. So that that does um, that does identify a lot of days throughout the week, not just uh, our Tuesdays and Thursdays that Lashley may not be available because of we're having multiple trips going out on those days. Uh, but is there still availability? Yes, right? Um, I do want us to be careful with having these types of conversations, those focus groups offsite, outside of our facility, because then it creates that perception of separation. separation. Mm -hmm. And that's not my perception. That is feedback I received um, from some of our participants who are in some of our groups. We have a beautiful location over there with a hardwood floor and mirrors. Um, I thought it'd be good for one of our dance groups to say, hey, we got the space available, would you like to use it? And it was a sense of, why are you trying to relocate us? Do you not want us here in the facility? We've always been here. And uh, I was like, oh, well, that's not a great, great place to better meet your needs for, for your dance practice, right? Um, so I, I just want to be mindful of that because again, relationship. Right? It feels that disconnected we're trying to something offsite outside of this facility so um, keep in mind it is a good idea to have these conversations here in our building uh, because it isn't it, it, there's that sense of inclusion right we're in the facility we're doing this work we have these conversations on how to grow programs um, on how to um, be more equitable in our programming how to um, create a better sense of equity so um, 
I just wanted to share that again. I wanted to hear what everyone had to say, but also know again that we are. This is in the works. This is our plans. We've already identified it. Uh, I, would work I know we have a new outreach program coordinator starting uh, January first. January with, with the intent of January first. Yeah. Um, okay. But we are getting this position posted ASAP, so trying to get that done. That was a program. Program coordinator. So not focusing on the outreach. So uh, Val, who we mentioned, current staff. She's going to be shifting a lot. Once this person gets acclimated, we're going to again. We want to be intentional. We want this to feel comfortable. Our whole goal has been focusing on that manageability of workload, right? So we don't want new person to start January one and dump everything on them. We want them to learn our systems, learn our structures, learn our contacts, learn our um, how we operate, learn our customers, learn our programs. That takes time. We want them to learn those things and then slowly shift those responsibilities over, and then that allows Val, Valerie to, um, and then if those things are shifted over, focus on our, uh, should be focusing on our volunteers and Spanish programs specifically with a small piece of things that she used to have, right? So we've been shifting all of those so she can be intentional in these spaces. Um, with that, again, giving her that time and energy to, to, to host these, these meetings, to host these roundtable discussions, collect feedback, bring it back to the table. These are some contacts I found within our community, outside of our community, that are Spanish speaking, that can offer these things. But it gives her the time to, um, to, to, and that's a lot of phone calls alone in one day, right? To be able to make those connections outside of our, in, in and outside of our community, finding these instructors, finding these contractors, finding these presenters, who can meet those specific needs that are specifically Spanish speaking, right? Um, that we're not bringing somebody who's English speaking and bringing them translated with them. And again, being intentional. So that's gonna take time to build that inventory. Right? So we're slowly gonna keep increasing it as we go, but again, allowing her the time to have these conversations um, with our patrons, with these contractors, create this plan, move forward, um, put these, start programming these, these new programs, advertising these programs, right? It's, it's, it's a lot. So we just don't want to just we don't want to just say here's ten new programs right that's that's not satisfying that need we just really want to be intentional with, with building it up so that that is on our plans we've already had those discussions um, and we have an idea of what it's going to look like we've created um, identified uh, preliminary timelines of this work um, um, identified some some goals in this work and so it, it can those fluctuate and they change absolutely we're going to evaluate as we go because the same thing for Val she's doing something that we've never done here which is growing Spanish programs with our whole focus since I've been here is finding that manageable workload so we don't want to dump a lot on her because she's growing a program within a program right and allow her the space to be intentional with that and feel like she has a manageable workload as well so but she has to continue on with her role now currently until the new person's hired. Right, right. And, and not only just hired, but acclimated to where we can start shifting those things over, right? right? So that may be two, three months into the new year, right? And training and all that. Right, and it will allow us to evaluate new person. How do you feel? Are you ready? Are you getting to the movie training this, right? Can, we, can you feel comfortable? Because again, we don't want to, if, if we just say, you have 30 days to learn all these things and then we're going to dump everything on you, we're creating that, that that same sense of um, of um, the same sense of non manageable workloads, no support. Feel like I'm doing too much with the little tools and skills that I have in this new role, and I can create the turnover again, right? So we're trying to be supportive of those spaces while we grow. So a question. I so I want to make sure that I'm not understanding this incorrectly. Are we also going to do some of the regular programming over there at Lashley so that it doesn't look like we're specifically saying this is going to be the Hispanic population? So, okay, you come up with 10 programs. Would you have some of them over there and bring some here and then take regular, so that it looks like we're doing yes, programs? Yeah. yeah. Are, is that what we're doing or are we if, just doing Hispanic there? And, if and when we program, yes. That sends a balance to both locations, but right now all we're doing is we shifted um, our um, our trip uh, trip destination. Or, right. That's our trip site for, and that's already a lot. 
we had, you know, we had to sometimes to do two the two things going on each day, mm -hmm. um, but at least something, almost something that we did coming out of there. So Amy's done a really good job working with recreation because we only have two days, right? Working with recreation and showing the family to say, hey, this is what we want to do. We want to have that be our uh, site for trip, um, for trip departure, and drop off. You know, but this dips into some of your days and times. You know, are you using these? using this space during these days and times or can we utilize this space and so she's made those connections um, on both sides children and family and recreation to where they said oh yeah we might use it up let them put it in the calendar <clears throat> and go ahead go ahead and use that space during this time so that has been uh, a 100 percent shift um, trips to that location Marshall yeah that was a question that I had was uh, I know that children youth and families is trying to expand their offerings at that uh, location as well so are there going to be conflicts but it's certainly the pick up and drop off that makes huge sense because that parking lot is really under underutilized and this one is always crowded so um, yeah and that, that, that's the reason behind that is I mean if there's a big trip they're leaving at 8 a.m they're getting back at 7 a.m and you have a charter bus of 50 people you know our, our parking lot is jammed all the way up to, to recreation mm -hmm. the entire day and somebody who's coming in for a drop in class for an hour and a half has to park um, a mile away. To get over here. And, and the impact to the building at Lashley is limited because people are yeah, there's going just in and using stuck. the restroom and right. heading out. And the person with the clipboard is standing around. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah. So they've been, um, so uh, the CYF representative and, and recreation uh, coordinator have been working together for, I'll say Amy has done a good job coordinating that, those conversations to make sure that um, when we are utilizing your space and time that we have your approval number one before you or with anything. So once you have all those approvals in place, then we were able to put that in the bill, which we'll talk about here shortly, um, our line manager's report that um, that we're able to, to advertise that as trips are now 100% moving over there. And so now as we plan for our next go cycle, right? Same conversations we have now, right? These are the dates that we're planning, and use your space during these times. And if there's a day or two where we have to figure something out or there's a no, no, we have something, then we can, we have plenty of time to say, okay, um, this day that we were planning this trip, we can move it to a different date or we can meet at a later time kind of a thing. So we'll be able to work around it still. Yeah. Or if it's a small enough group, is that you park your car and go straight to the vehicle for check-in. Yeah, we're still working on this. So there's still ways around it. If the space is utilized but back to your question for programming specifically when we get there yeah we'll just it, it's an extension of our facility we're not going to just plan one specific thing program over there it'll be fluid right because we want to say we, we want we don't want that division and i didn't i didn't even think about it that way it was just a suggestion i made but that is the perception of oh why are you trying to get away from us why, why do you not want us here we've been here for a very long time and for me it's like well that's why we want the mirrors Mirror's great, right? And so, um, and it's a hardwood floor who wants it, right? And, but, you know, that, that, that was the perception of the feeling. So I, I had to, I had, I had to respect that perception and that feedback and just put that in my pocket for awareness moving forward and, and not be mindful of those things. And maybe once they see it, you know, right. it just becomes a regular part of right. programs for, Everybody, and yeah. they can say, you know what, it really does work great. Right? Really, I, we like that mirrors and the hardwood floors. So. And that's why we started with um, with trips. A lot of people go on those trips, um, and even if it's not in the building for 15 minutes, like that is to take a little tour around, become familiar, become comfortable utilizing that space. And if there's a program that's over there, it's like, okay, well now, I, I I'm, I've been there. Okay, it's this is I, I know what to expect, and um, we're using it for other things, so. It is okay that my group is now meeting over there, right? What do you think? I think, yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And as we start getting, uh, like we've had meetings already, me and our recreation programming team have had meetings to identify everything we were just talking about. Uh -huh. But as we start getting closer to making this higher and solidifying some of these um, timelines, goals within those timelines, I'll be reporting back to, to the advisory board about that process of, hey, this is what our goals are. And again, 
uh, you know, hey, we, we exceeded our goal or we didn't hit our goal um, that we wanted, um, but it allows us to evaluate and shift at the same time. Like we're, we're going to be very mindful. Nothing's going to be concrete. If there's a deadline there, that, that's what we're moving away from, right? We, we, we need it to we need it to, to happen intentionally and naturally and not operate off of timelines. Right? Yeah. 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 And the people don't want to change. And if they say, well, that's what we're doing. The German conversation class is now is going to be moved and actually I'm sure people will say, well, why us? But they'll get used to it. I mean, because this place, this lovely building, we've been talking about expanding it. Well, we are expanding it to Lashley. That makes sense. That's a much cheaper a more efficient way of expanding the usage here. And when, when when roundtable discussions take place, of course we're glad to work with the full area and be invited to be a part of those conversations. And, um, but again, once we start nailing down the detail of this work, it'll it'll be presented in, in easy ways. So yeah, it's it's at the forefront and we're ready for anything. <clears throat> Let me ask a question, or maybe it's more of an observation. Um, when Carmen was here a few months ago, she really impressed me with her, her point of view and her understanding of the community. And uh, like I said, the one word that impressed me was incrementalism. You know, try to do things a little bit at a time. Don't try to just do everything at once. And that made all kinds of sense to me. And Art, if I wasn't at the meeting, but I did look at the video. And Art seemed to be saying, and we've had conversations too, is that part of the problem we don't have the representation of Hispanics here is because of the past history. And it's not that there's been outright discrimination or anything like that, that's not the issue at all. It's just that it's, they don't feel comfortable, they, the, the Hispanic community, doesn't feel comfortable. Because I guess they, there aren't enough people of a similar culture around I don't know how to say it exactly, but that's been basically the problem. And just saying, oh, we're gonna have a program for Hispanics over here, it doesn't work. I mean, so that's why I think Art was saying, we need to deal directly with some of the leaders, some of the contacts within the community. And I think that's what the idea of getting the youth together to help on yep. and, and so on. And absolutely be cool in those conversations, right? Like the big picture. Um, and, and it is true, right? Representation does matter, right? It, it, it's hard, and I, I mean, this is feedback that I received. It, it's, it's not. If, if I'm going to a Spanish program, top five English speaker, having a translator communicate with me, that's hard for me to get excited for a program I want to be a part of when, yeah. when that's how I'm learning, right? And. and um, and I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll leave it at that. That representation does matter. Mm -hmm. um, then again, it goes back to the, the relationship piece too as well. If I'm, if I know who this presenter is, or I've been a part of some of their other presentations or or um, programs, I'm more likely to continue going to additional things or their or programming or new new opportunities because I know who that is and I know what to expect. And um, and, and that trust is going back to the relationship that trust is there, that relationship is there, it's established. So um, that's the feedback I got. And that's why we want to be intentional, right? Finding these presenters and programmers, uh, I'm sorry, contractors who are Spanish speaking and don't need a translator uh, for, for their work. Marsha. Yeah, I, I think there is, is, is still a, I'm sure it's not an intent, but, a, but a, a, uh, the sound of, of segregationism, in, even in terms of saying we're going to have a program for Hispanics, that's really not the way we should be thinking about it. We should talk about leadership. And because the presumption should be, well, all our programs are for anyone, and there should be no presumption that um, some programs are only of interest to one community. Community. Instead, we can think about programs being led if they if they are something that emerges from a particular culture. We recruit the leadership from 
the volunteer portion of the leadership from that community, and then invite everyone. Um, that's a much more inclusionary way of doing it, and there's nothing um, separatist about recruiting a leadership, a leader from a specific community, that's inclusion. So um, I think that that just kind of gives us a different metaphor for, for talking about it, um, as well as I think it would work better. You know, I'd be more interested. Like, you know, somebody's going to go and have a trust that he's going to find them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but I mean, you know, if you want, if you want inclusion, you want things to be of interest to multiple groups. Yes, and Shiva. Yeah, um, I agree 100% because otherwise we're going back to the days of separate but equal. Um, and integration is what we have striven for in this country. It's been a tough road, but the separate but equal in terms of they are here and we're here, we've given them the same. We're, we're all doing the same thing. Gives that impression of exclusion instead of inclusion. So, so Spanish programs is in, is that we're talking about Spanish programs specifically. It's not creating that division. It's creating an opportunity no. uh, because I'm gonna we're, I'm gonna use a generic example. We're we're having um, somebody talking about uh, diet and health, right? Culturally, those are two different conversations. Right, uh, an English presenter, their 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 message on diet, um, of course, eating healthy is the overall message, right? But let's say they're talking about meal planning. Culturally, that's a different conversation, right? So same message, but uh, culturally responsive to what their needs are specifically. Um, so there's no there's no division. I just not I mean how many I, I can't think. Is that there's so many um, um, so many Spanish speakers that come in here that, that they don't speak English at all right that need to have the same opportunities um, to to learn from from mm -hmm. present around diet and health and exer and have exercise classes and all of these educational opportunities that we, we currently offer in English so that's the whole purpose of the intentional dual language Spanish program specifically is, is to meet those needs um, provide the same opportunities. Okay, let me, <clears throat> I'm probably the slow learner in our group here, so bear with me. Um, so you're saying, I get the idea of separatist, you know, not doing things separately, and then maybe that's not a good idea. I get that. And so are you saying the focus of the future effort should be working with the leadership of the community? key people within the community in regards to what it is you're trying to do. Yes. Right. Okay. And again, it's all purpose of focus groups and finding these people within our this we'll talk to use that word leadership uh, roles yeah. within our community that can come in and provide those educational opportunities. Yeah. Uh, provide those fitness classes. All right. Everybody so, kind of yeah. agrees with that I think. I see nodding heads here. And, and, and so the, and so those are the, those examples, right? If we're talking about day trips and things like that, then that is an opportunity for everybody. Uh, we don't need, it, depending on the trip, everyone's going their own direction anyway, right? We don't need a, a translator for, for that. Mm -hmm. we, and we wouldn't define what program people would go to. They would choose the program that works best for them. Right. Not, not this is yours and this is yours. That would never be and I think that's kind of Marshall what you were trying to say. It is, you know, another an example that sort of I think Ronnie mentioned it. The this idea of culinary culinary programs, you can you don't have to necessarily identify community leaders. You can also create them. So in this community, we have a number of small ethnic grocery stores, not just Spanish. We have we have South Asian grocery stores that I can at least think of. Um, and that can, you know, a program that, that works that way can be incredibly inclusionary because you create the leader by inviting the store proprietor or, or you know, is, or tend to be a family business, inviting someone from the family to come talk about products and how you tell what's fresh and 
you know, where you get the fresh food and whether it's local and, and all kinds of stuff like that. You can turn it into a language, a two-way language lesson um, because you can talk about the terminology and the recipes in their home language and then um, translate them for the non-native speakers or for the native English speakers, right. Right. you know. So it's, it's of, of, I think, equal interest to everybody there as opposed to being something that's just really Anglo-centric, which too many programs are right now. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what I'm trying to get away from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well. In fact, I want to do that. Yeah. Now yeah. Think about it. <laughs> so what next? Um, do we, what's your pleasure? Should we just monitor, you know, what they're, what, uh, Ronnie just laid out for us. Did you, what about the idea of focus groups? Should we just let that go and let let them handle it? Why? I I think that to avoid duplication of effort, um, we should monitor what Ronnie said is already in the plan for 2024, and just he seems to have what your suggestion was already in place and already moving forward with. So I think the best thing we can do is just keep that as being a report that we get. Anytime you know you come up with something new, you can just say, hey, as far as this you know, subject, here's where we're at. But I don't think anything else is necessary. It sounds like it's already in play. Sheila? I would think that to invite Carmen again to speak to us. Carmen? Carmen, yes. Okay. Specifically to this issue, I think it would be invaluable. Oh, she was great, I yeah. thought. It's just I think you should get Veronica because you she know knows more about what we're doing here. As I'm well. sorry? Veronica, our mm -hmm. staff member, she's been doing the programming here. So I think her insight would be very valuable. Yeah. And Veronica's well yeah. in that part of this work that you're also, as uh, Robin mentioned, um, she has those connections, she has that relationship, she has that information, mm -hmm. right? Now she's going to work with uh, Valerie, Val, Veronica and Valerie, to work with Valerie to, here's my historical knowledge. I know you're working on this and you're running with it. I'm going to work with you to, to support you with the information and help me make those connections, those contacts to, to, to help it grow. So we do have that resource that, 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 that historical knowledge to, inside of our building. May I ask you something then? Um, do you see saying in the next, the beginning couple of months of 2024, would be a good time to have Veronica come in and talk to us about this so that we give you guys time to kind of start the ball rolling? If that's what we're looking towards, when do you think would be a good time to be able to get a substantial, not a substantial, but a, a good solid report on how things are moving. I think February would be a good point, and it would be Valerie um, because Veronica would be able to work with Valerie to give her the knowledge she needs to grow program from the program. Okay. So I'd say February because that allows a new person in the building us to gauge an actual timeline. Like we can we can draw it up, but we need them to again. We want to go slow, go fast. How right, then exactly. You come out quickly again, have that sense of support, um, not feeling overwhelmed, learning at a rate that is manageable before they take over her programs, right? I think February would give us a good idea of, okay, well, new person's been in, they've been here for 30 days, they've been here for a month. Um, we, uh, we are anticipating in end of February or early March to hand everything over to allow Valerie to be, this, be, to be intentional in growing these grant programs. And this is what we're envisioning. This is what we have in place. Uh, focus groups we've identified, um, um, information we've already received, conversations we've already had, and be able to give an accurate uh, projection of timelines from there. And let me ask you, do you think March would be even better? March would be, we'd have probably have, have, have. Well, There's no need to rush this, right? right? No, there's no, no need for us to so want to report. February would be a good check-in point. March would be like, okay, okay, this is where we're at, and this is what we're doing. 
And, and along those lines, I'm thinking, I don't know that we need to have a report every month. I'm thinking right. quarterly, quarterly, because then that gives you time to say, here's what we've done over the last three months, right. you know, rather than so. so Everyone works whatever you guys well, want. I like to brag about my team. So <laughs> when we have these new things coming up, I have no problem being like, hey, just so you know, this is the progress we've made, or hey, this is where we, where we were projecting things to be here, but we're really here. Hey, we reevaluated and we can't want to pull back because we don't want to pull everything else. Okay, so <clears throat> our role then, I guess we've just decided that our role is going to be that of just monitoring right. what they're doing right. with quarterly reports basically agree with this approach. The objective is to penetrate the Hispanic community in terms of whatever their needs are. I, I don't pretend to know, but that's the objective, right? We're, we're all on board on that? Uh, Marsha. Yeah, a, a, couple of, a couple of things. First of all, in terms of, of quarterly is fine, let's, let's make sure that we don't get our goals out of sync by making sure, by talking about reports of this kind coordinate in the spring with the budget cycle so that a, the advisory function is possible. Because if we get a, re, a report right after Ron gets done with the budget, we don't have any way to um, add ideas into the budget or, you know, or discuss trade-offs or anything like that. And that's what an advisory report is supposed to be. I'm a little concerned about that too. Uh, did did I cut you off? Well, I had a I had a second, uh, just to comment on language, which is you know penetrate the community is not what we're trying to do. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I never was articulate. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well, <laughs> what time? Uh, uh, what time is Becky scheduled to speak? I assume it gets forward about fifteen groups. Okay. But but no, that that was my other support. My other support. But but I do think we need to keep all our timeline. Be mindful of all of our timelines. Mm -hmm. well, so. Just to clarify, if we said March, would that be too late to do anything? No, could we move that to February? We could do February. Okay. And that's fine. And I'm probably going to give you an update before that. <laughs> like yeah, I said, I'd like to brag about it. <laughs> and again, I'm serious. Sure, you could do, do managers, you know, and just put it in there, uh -huh. a quick update, and here's how it's going. And, and March would not be too late. You know, really, the, the budget requests have to be in during May. So it would allow you, March, April, May, thereabouts, to to have those conversations. Just if that's out. the case, then I would think, I would just like to say that we go back to March. Okay. And I'll probably still do an update in February. Yeah, right, but, okay. we, but we can yeah. focus on, on yeah, March as well. Let's do February because, of, you know, <clears throat> maybe it's not a big deal. To me, it's a big deal. We're supposed to put something in writing to the city council. And I know a lot of times I've just turned them on to a tinker's dam, but I'm trying to make it something worthwhile you know, something that they're, they're, they're looked at and listened to. You'd know better or not whether they would look at those things. You know. But anyway, that's why, that's why I keep saying it needs to be specific and reasonable and practical and that sort of thing. I think that's part of what you're saying is we need to get our stuff, we need to get our recommendation in motion before March. And that's the vehicle that we have. Other than maybe, maybe Harold would come to another meeting like in February. Or I requested for yeah. Yeah. Do we can we do a, a March meeting? I mean, couldn't we do a March report and still be able to make recommendations to the budget? Yes. Yeah, that's what you said, and then okay. Yeah, I um, I still think we should go back to having a March um, update because it would be more information more quantitative as far as what you could report and we still have time to make any recommendations. And to answer Dave's question, um, my recommendation from, from here in the trenches um, is uh, a report to council should be a presentation because otherwise people will not. You know, if something is just 15 pages in the packet, it might be yeah. skimmed. 
So okay. yeah, okay. it doesn't need to be long, but it should be there. What I have seen uh, in the past is that, so like the library board or the museum board or something like that, they actually come to the council and mm -hmm. give the report. Is that more effective? It's the not? only thing that's effective. Okay. 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 So who should do that? Should it be someone like Jeff, Bonnie, me, somebody else? Who should do that? I think that we should work with Bonnie and Jeff to make sure that the content is directed properly and, and is within our scope and with and you know isn't isn't contrary to the managerial plans, but I think a new face is effective and so we should have a board member do at least part of it. Okay. And and I I agree because what I have seen is that a council member will ask a question if you're doing your presentation, which can't always be answered by a board member. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it needs to be Ronnie or somebody else. Yeah. Is yeah. We'll, we'll and call in and help you. Well, some of the stuff we don't need to decide today, I right. but I guess we agree on our general direction. Sure, but I would just say, you know, a, a board member stands up, and this happens over and over and over again. What happens is somebody gets up and talks, the council starts asking questions, and the staff mm -hmm. converges on right. the podium. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So, uh -huh. Yeah, no, I mean, you've been to lots of council. <laughs> yeah. I see that. Yeah. Uh, it gets scary. <laughs> <laughs> so, I do want to share our, our team is very excited that we are in a position to not only employ staff, but we could be intentional in, in growing Spanish programs um, as a whole. And so, um, yeah, we, the excitement's there, the energy's there, and I just want to make sure we're providing that, that space to be intentional with this work. Okay. So we're not so how many Spanish programs do we have now, and how well are they attended? Oof, so we have, I gotta look, um, and I don't want to give my numbers, this is a, uh, um, a report I, said, I presented to the board, I think in May, and I think it was nine programs, uh, to nine programs, and 24 drop-ins. Okay. And so that was in comparison to, was it 2007, where we only put in programs by like five, um, Spanish programs were five and drop ins doubled to 24. And um, but then again, looking at our, our standard programs, right? Uh, we went from 80 to 87, 187 in that same span of time. So again, there's definitely an inequity, inequity in, our, in our programming, and that's why we want to be intentional in growing it. Okay. Um, everybody okay with what we're yeah. doing? Mm -hmm. Anybody want to make a motion? I don't, we don't need a motion necessarily. Do we need a motion for anything? Okay. So, February? February. Oh, we said March, but like I still. Said, so, March. so, I don't really care. I just, I'm, I'm still probably going to share something with yeah. <laughs> right. March will be the fo uh, identified focus point for um, more con uh, I was saying it's another concrete but more realistic timelines, right? Sure. Right. Okay. More concrete. Right. Well, we'll have. <clears throat> We'll have a have a report at a, at a future date, February, March, probably in March. All right. Housing. Do you have a question? Oh, Gus, I'm sorry, Jeff. So I know Becky said that she was here for as long, but okay. Do you want to could we? Yeah. yeah. Do you want to <laughs> um, and we're here with the people check yeah, the sure house. Yeah. And we got how, how easy and quick is it to turn that on? I just talk about numbers. I have to go ahead and get a card and bring them in. And so, okay. did ever does everybody have the the PowerPoint that you could refer to right now? Is this a survey? That's yeah. The one. Oh, you okay. did? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So, they at least can okay. see it. Yeah. Yeah. You have it to refer to, but yeah. I'll just kind of talk through um, the results. So first of all, I'm sure. Becky? Yeah. Stop all over. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Hello, I'm Becky Doyle. I'm the Executive Director of Strategic Integration. 
This is Lindy Yarby, who's our data and analytics manager. Um, and at, at, at the time we, we helped to support this survey, we were the, the sum total of the, the data team. Since then, we, we do have some data analysts, and so we may be able to do some more um, uh, analysis and, and, and interpretation of some of the results that we received. Um, is that what you needed, Robin? Lynn Yarby. Lynn Yarby, yes. And what's that position assigned to? Data and Analytics Manager. Thank you. So, first of all, thank you all so much for your support of the intercept surveys here. I think overall we got a really great response rate to, um, to this survey. Um, I don't know. Frankly, have never seen a response rate quite this high to a survey of this nature. Really? Is that good? Yes, yeah. I think no, I was very impressed with the numbers. Yeah, well, we end up that much. Yeah, close to a thousand. Yeah, so it's really great. And I think that really speaks to you know the, the strength of the community and you know your help in, in doing um, some of, of that legwork. Um, we did also try something new in this, um, where we, we also um, we, we did a mailed component of the survey, which like usually helps get a more statistically um, representative sample. Um, in this case, we did not see great results from the mailed survey, um, so that's going to help us, I think, in, as we think about how best to gather feedback from, um, you know, especially communities of particular interest. <coughs> Um, you know, that, that mailed survey was, was bilingual. I think we got a total of what, like 10 surveys back in the mail, with two of them were Spanish. So, I, you know, I, I think we're going to have to reach specifically into those communities for, for, um, for information if, if, we, if we want that. So, that's, that's an interesting case. So, the very first um, kind of uh, graph here in the, in the PowerPoint is about the, the distribution of. Um, the responses across the age categories, and the, these are the age categories from the census. Um, so on the left is, is what our response distribution looks like, and on the right is what that census population distribution is. And we talked a little bit about this kind of on the, the front end of like, how do we know how representative the sample is? And as you can see, that 55 to 64 age group that we were particularly interested in is underrepresented in the sample. So what we did about that was um, we weighted some of the responses to, to account for that, um, to kind of uh, uh, make sure that we had as much of the, the 55 to 64 voice as, um, as we wanted to hear as, as is uh, warranted by uh, the population. Otherwise, I think the, the, the distribution is pretty good across, um, across those age groups. Um, so overall, Great, obviously, great attendance. Part of that has to do with the fact that we did an intercept survey, but you know, the fact that we did get a lot of folks um, answering no to that question about whether they visited the senior center in the last 12 months leads me to believe we had some some good good coverage. Um, and then what was really interesting then on on slide four there was the was that distribution again between age groups. Um, <laughs> where you have that split where you in the 65 to 74 you have you know that kind of 70 percent attending 30 percent not attending and it's almost flipped in that 55 to 64 which is i think something that that you all had not expected to see <laughs> we have a about the hours <laughs> <laughs> right but marcia we had to ask if that was the if that was yeah, the scenario So then we also asked about, you know, what's what's bringing you in today? Um, obviously, a lot of really wonderful programs, as you all have discussed, and those program items are really what, what people are, are coming for. They're coming for classes and workshops. They're coming for exercise and fitness. Um, so that's that's helpful and I think really affirming as, as far as the approach that you're taking um, moving forward. Um, so that's... That's that next slide on um, six, and then again on our excuse me on five, and then on slide six, again that's that's broken down by age group. So you can see that there's a little bit of a difference in terms of what programs people are attending. Um, so particularly for the 55 to 64 age range, there's there's 
less attendance um, at the exercise and fitness. Um, I think we could probably interpret that in a number of ways. It could be that they're using, you know, other um, other things, but it, you know, um, so, so this this one is the reason that they're currently attending. Um, it'll also be, I think, helpful to look at the like areas of interest um, as we move forward. So for 55 to 64, exercise and fitness is lower than the rest of the population, and then. Um, there was a slightly higher interest um, or kind of uncharacteristically higher interest in special events. So as we think about like kind of in the life cycle of, of a, you know, a, a senior center um, participant, seems like maybe special events are a good way to start their, their relationship um, and then, you know, to move into other classes and programs um, as that continues. So I just have a, a question or clarification. When we're saying meals on wheels, does that actually mean the center's luncheon? Yes. Okay. Not the meals on wheels. Not right. Not participation in the meals on wheels program. It's the center. Yeah, it's, it's okay. why are they coming to the center? The actual center. Okay. Yes. So. And I have one more. Um, I think you said it was slide five and six about reasons for attending. Mm -hmm. um, the grand total figures are different. Yes. Um, and that is because I think the, the top one is we can be weighted uh, according to that population piece yeah. so that we can get the ranking um, correct, whereas the one that's actually split out by age is actual. actual. I should have yeah. known. Actually, no, that's too high. Maybe I had that reversed. I will let you know. <laughs> so. And then. Um, slide seven, which is question four, is about you know ranking you know that that ranking of um, interest in programs. Um, so exercise and fitness is, is kind of the, the number one like highest interest um, piece across the population, um, followed by you know drop-in activities and classes and workshops. So um, uh, back in. <laughs> So interestingly, like across the population, there's lower interest in special events, but you know, if, if that's a good entry point for your 55 to 64s, that, that might kind of help um, target some of either the marketing or um, how, how we go about that. So um, definitely some things of interest here. Um, an extension that we weren't able to, to get to in time for this was, was you could break down by age group for this it was just a lot here because it's a, it's a the ranking exercise, but um, uh, that I think could also be really helpful in some of these other things. Following that, we asked about barriers to participation. Great news across that whole population. The most common response was, I don't have barriers, I can easily participate. Um, and, and again, that, that could be related to a little bit of the sample bias because we had a really high um, percentage of, of intercept surveys here, but mm -hmm. I think it's really good news. Um, and then at, right after that, we see open hours and program times don't match my availability. So, um, which is great because I think you all are, are working towards solving that problem and, and also kind of talking about the, the, the relevance and awareness pieces that, that come from I think both of those. Um, similarly, the, the barriers for that 55 to 64 age range, I think I just left the numbers off of this because I was like, this waiting and not waiting thing is just not helping. Uh, uh, when we look at that age group, the number one barrier that that age group identified was the open hours and program times. There certainly were a lot of comments about these, you know, uh, work schedules and things like that um, that were happening. So, um, and, and the other thing, the other difference that you see here is that uh, I don't consider myself a senior. Mm -hmm. Kind of pops up a couple spots in, in, in terms of ranking. Um, so that, that's maybe something to take a look at. Uh, I still don't consider myself a senior. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't want your <laughs> One that I think is interesting is that, that you know the relevance goes down, whereas in the kind of the overall population, there's there's that discussion of like, oh yeah, these programs are relevant. 
this one really is ours and awareness. And so it's how are we reaching that, that population in, in the first place um, to let them know about what is available. Um, I would like to point out that programs aren't offered in my language is the very bottom. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe we need to focus on cultural diversity rather than language diversity. Mm -hmm. Although it could be that we're not getting people here who have a language barrier as right. opposed to. And, mm -hmm. and I think that is something that we see, like thinking about the survey response, you know, again, like kind of that, that, that sample versus population. I, I'm not sure that the that the sample really reflected reflects the population in terms of language. Um, so we, we may want to do focus groups or, or something to yeah. Yeah. I know that the surveys that I know about, I think they only <coughs> had two in Spanish. So I don't think mm -hmm. yeah, that actually needed them in Spanish. Other questions, observations? I was, I'm just going to say quick, I was glad to see that transportation wasn't a problem. Mm -hmm. I really like that idea that that's not keeping people from being in the city. That's good. That seems to be uh, really well done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, an observation is we've done a couple of short surveys. We did one last, about a year ago, <coughs> something like that. Mm -hmm. And we did another one about six months ago. And uh, the results, it wasn't as structured as though this was by any means. But the results are similar. Uh, the, the kinds of things that people like, you know, classes, workshop, exercise, you know, they're, they're always up there. Um, and then like uh, uh, computer and techno, techno, uh, technology assistance in the lower half generally. Anyway, the overall ranking, very similar between all of these, even though this, the, the surveys are quite different. Yeah, that's really helpful. Thank you. Um, yeah, and we're certainly happy to, to help, you know, kind of in, in longitudinal work if we can find solutions or, or in, in focus groups. So, yeah. We got lots of folks volunteering for those focus groups. Any other questions? And have the sort of focus groups that we pulling in the 55 to 64? Is there any intention of, okay, this is how we kind of start to tackle those things? Is, you know, is it a combination of um, <coughs> our availability and programs offered? Are they available? I mean, there's 148 for hours, 105 for programs offered. Mm -hmm. I mean, is it because it's programs speak to the 66 and older? Else? Yeah. Yes, Marcia. Yeah. Um, and uh, coming back to the uh, extended hours thing, which I, I think you got more evidence <laughs> that, that would be useful. Um, if we may be ready to take the next step with that, if especially if you're doing organizing additional surveys and focus groups, which nights are better for extending hours? Mm -hmm. Or are for our weekends better for extending hours? Mm -hmm. um, because uh, then we can look at how, all right, how much does it cost mm -hmm. to extend hours? Mm -hmm. And those are all things that we're going to want to know by April. Yeah. Well, Jeff and I already um, have, have put that in our. Oh, good. Yeah. You guys are good. So uh, I worked with Jeff to identify those costs. Yeah. And now we're looking at the intentionality. Days. Yeah. If, if that is the direction, right? What days? What our, our proposal was to stay open until seven mm -hmm. and then be open, at least to start with, on Saturdays from like eight to four. And, and then, depending on how well that went, then make the future request to include Sunday or, or later. Or even early. Yeah. 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 Or even less. I mean, it's hard to squeeze in. You know, I, I, I'm all right. I will admit to not doing anything at eight o'clock on Saturday. So it might be ten to four would be plenty good. Okay. I've got, I've got
got one question. Um, I just mentioned that we've done three or four surveys over the last year and a half or so, and, and they're all on programs. And uh, have you ever done one on services? Yeah. And what, one more in detail, like counseling or or any of these, you could take any of those categories and break them down. But you know, there's this, you know, legal, financial, kind of mental health, and all all of the services. I'm not quite sure if I've ever seen anything quite on on that. And it's okay. And I appreciate you saying that because after seeing these adult, these results around programs specifically, that's exactly where my mind went. Like, okay, this is fantastic information we got. It is good information. We had, we had yes. such a great response over the amount of participants. How do we shift that to to that specifically, right? Those uh, counseling support, uh, counseling services or resource support, supportive services as well. Just kind of start unpacking that as well and seeing, seeing um, what the needs are there. The, what we can do to improve in those spaces. Does that allow me to, to go back to the counseling budget, right? Go back yeah. and say, okay, well, we, we should offer a position that already, that doesn't exist based off of this information or I'm going to request an additional person that, that already exists within our, mm -hmm. uh, within, within our facility. That makes sense. Like mental health, I think one you mentioned that. that was, you know, that's a huge area that we, we need information on. And I, I know you, I know your staff has, has a good feel for it, It'd be nice yeah. to get some numbers. That was my. That was going to be my next next ask. Is is there any way to shift this towards that? And, and what can that look like? And this, this goes back to the issue of data collection too, that we've talked about several times. Uh, I've got that's a, that's another discussion. Uh, I've got some ideas on how we might approach that, but that's another discussion. Mm -hmm. Could I also add, and this is not a criticism, but way this was conducted. I noticed from my experience handing out questionnaire forms, one, that there was people who were in a class and they came out and so four or five, six of them said, oh, we'll do this now. Mm -hmm. But if somebody is coming in for counseling or a one-on-one, -on -one, they come out and they're, even if they want to, fill this form out, they're just one person. So we're getting a little bit of a, a bias in that way. When I had several people who were who came for a was it a Kiwanis meeting? Do they meet in here? And they looked at the thing and said, oh well, no, this is the only time I come here. Mm -hmm. But they were included in the in the results. So I'm not sure what's what's the best way. I don't either. Yeah. But people yeah. also had the opportunity online to yeah. fill out the survey as well. Mm -hmm. So you didn't even have to come here if you wanted to provide uh, yeah, that's feedback. True. Now how many people <clears throat> you said that there was people could yeah. It wasn't the online. It was the mail. Yes, the mail, mail. Yeah, so the mail yes. survey results were, were low yeah. and you know in the and double digits. And what about the in person and online? Well, in person and online, there was a fairly even split. Mm -hmm. Actually, mm -hmm. so we did get a lot of um, of online results. I could probably dig into the. So that's that's a heavy, I guess. It's just the system numbers, but it was. It's pretty even. And it's you know okay. what, too, when I would stop people and ask them if they wanted to do it, some of them said, Oh, I already got it online and I already did it, or I saved it and I'm going to do it, and so I'm just going to go online. So, yeah. That was just one way you went on. Uh, okay. Anything else? Thank you so much. It was very good. Thank you, Thank you very much. Yeah. I really like the results. And do I, it's I telling us the results? Am I reflecting the feeling of the board? And I say that maybe we need information on services and yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll follow up with that. Yeah. All right. Housing. Housing update. All right, I'll do my usual um, okay. reading from my report. Yeah. 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 This is fantastic. I appreciate it. Um, Ronnie and I, not Ronnie. Thank you. Ronnie and I have been looking at housing issues. 
and we somewhat split it up right now. Um, Longmont's population is growing at some would say an alarming rate, as we have now cleared the 100,000 mark. And the senior population, which is for the purposes of this, it's 55 and over, is growing at a faster rate than the general population. One third of Longmont's population today is over 55 years old. And the often cited population growth for seniors over 80 years old of 244% increase by 2050 is worth being bearing in mind, even though base numbers for this projection are few and far between. Over 50% of Longmont homeowners are aged over 55, and the percentage of all seniors who are homeowners is well over 75%. All sounds very prosperous, but there are still 25% of seniors over 55 who are either renters or living in some type of assisted living facility. While older homeowners often find themselves still living with a mortgage to pay, but now with only one income, or surviving on an inadequate income of social security and small private pensions. So what is long run like for these seniors? Aileen Whaley of Longmont's affordable housing program described the senior housing needs in the city as complex. Right, Marsha? Oh, I love that. I say that. Uh, the city's down payment assistance program is popular and helpful for prospective home buyers trying to get together a down payment, and most loans fall into the zero repayment bucket. But this does not help seniors trying to stay in the home ownership world and downsizing proves to be difficult these days, not just because house prices have risen so dramatically in the last decade, but seniors lose their homestead property tax deduction when they move. Exactly. This is maybe the one bright spot mm -hmm. for seniors in the complexity of Proposition HH. The homestead exemption will be portable and tied to the property owner rather than the actual property. And I have to say, after reading the complexities of HH, this is the one thing that popped out at me, and it's the one thing that will make me vote for it. Thank you. Um, so where does that leave seniors who are renting or who decide they should leave the property market and rent instead? They find along with younger renters that rents have also increased exponentially, and monthly payments for even modest apartments are now in the 12 to $1,500 range. And now we get into the world of affordable or attainable housing, MHI, which is median house, household income, rental-based vouchers, and the LHA. Uh, Ronnie and I will review, research, and report. So this is the easy bit. The reporting will be more complex. And we started to meet with people. We met with three different representatives of the area of housing. We met with, uh, I met with four people here from the senior center. Um, Sheila met with, um, no, I guess we both did. We met with Alice from Hope, and we also met with Kaylee from the city. Mm -hmm. um, and I had some email contact with Zoe and, and um, and we're also going to be meeting with Molly as soon as she can kind of fit it into a schedule. Um, but right now, one of the people there is on medical leave, so uh, she's kind of taken over that too, so she's kind of busy right now. But this is an ongoing thing for us, so we're not looking to hurry up and get with people. We just wanted to start the process. I met with Veronica, Melissa, and Amy from the Senior Center. Um, and the big thing we heard from everybody is more affordable housing is needed in Longmont. Another thing we heard is more assisted, affordable assisted living housing is needed in Longmont. Um, since we most making it then? Well, you know, we, uh, the, historically and, and almost dogmatically, the LHA has stayed away from assisted living because that's Medicare, Medicaid. Right. And now that we have some younger thinkers <laughs> focused on the problem, now the LHA is kind of thinking, yeah, maybe we need a public option for mm -hmm. assisted living, but that's just 
where you know, they're just at the incremental start of their, their So the answer is right now is no, the city slash the LHA doesn't offer anything for assisted living. Right. And that's one of the reasons why there are some culture, cultural problems at the senior housing because people are hanging on to their senior housing and they really are in assisted living because they can't afford it. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, since most of the housing oops, um, in the last 10 years has been built for seniors in LHA, mm -hmm. new building will be geared towards family, single um, people, and housing the unhoused. Um, one second, I'm getting a message here. Um, and some seniors will be able to get into some of the new housing. It's not strictly non-senior or senior, so. Um, my computer's doing something very funky here, just one moment. Here we go. Um, eligibility for affordable housing is set with different tiers and based on AMI, average median income. Affordability is a relative term. What's affordable for a working person would be different than what's affordable for seniors. And I'm going to go through a few of the quick issues that we discussed. Affordable housing for seniors, people 55 to 62 years old, and the unhoused. And what they're finding is people who are 55 to 62 are also becoming a noticeable population needing housing. Um, they're finding that their apartments are getting too expensive. Um, some of the times they lose a spouse, so they only have one income coming in. So it's not just seniors at 62. It's working people who are older, and their life changes has caused, has caused them to have to redo their housing situation. I'm really sorry about this computer, you guys. Okay, I'm going to try to remember what they said. Um, so, um, if people have their homes and they have what's called the home, perfect. Thank you. Pay their own rent. Yes. There's an advantage. People wanting to age at home. Can they afford extra care if they need to bring it into their home? Um, and can they cover expenses like possible mortgage payment when income changes? property taxes, maintenance, accessibility modifications to their home. So they may own their home and they may not even have a mortgage, but if they start running into problems with property taxes going up and modifications needing to be done on their home, then that's that's running into their income too. That's running into the problem of their income. Grandparents raising grandchildren. Um, what they find here is that different levels of help is needed different level of help is needed for the grandparent as opposed to the child who's living with the grandparent. Loss of spouse or partner. Loss of income and possibly, need, and possibly needing to take over running the household. So it could be that the person who did all the chores, all the tasks in running the household passes. And the, the other spouse has to take over. Not only paying the bills, but making sure the taxes are paid and all that sort of thing when they're not even aware of how to do it. Uh, people renting for many years have their homes sold um, and they can't find affordable replacement for that. Um, I'm going to address that at the end. Seniors who own homes and get benefits like the Homestead Act will lose them if they sell their home. So they would have to wait, you said, five to ten years for it to be reactivated if they move to a new place. Is that it? Right five now to it's, ten it's a complete reset. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And how long would that be? Ten years. Okay. Um, so the question is, seniors who own home, uh, no, if they sell their home to downsize, they'll have to find a reasonably priced replacement, um, which is not a lot of inventory any longer. And we'll have to navigate the question of what to do with the money made on their sale of the original home. Mobile homes have some restrictions on what they can sell or if they can sell depending upon their age. But what I was told was, because they do start depreciating right away, but what I was told was people are surprised 
because of the demand that they can sell their mobile home for higher than they expected. When they go to sell it, they find out that they're actually going to make more than they realized because of the fact that people are finding that an affordable alternative um, to housing, to when they sell their own home or when they need to find another rental. Um, but again, replacement home, homes also always have to be found. And the biggest shame is that people who have spent their careers working for Longmont, supporting its growth, keeping it clean, keeping its citizens supplied with pool and fuel, food, resources to help the city grow, are now finding their long-term rentals are being sold or their rent is not, now out of range. So the very people that helped to bid, build Longmont now cannot afford to stay here to retire. They must move away from the community that they helped to build. And that was the biggest shame that I got out of the whole meeting, was the people who worked hard for Longmont stayed here. They had great landlords who rented decade after decade, didn't do a lot of the rent increases. When the landlord passes or sells the home and everything goes in flux. You know, they don't know who's gonna own it. They don't know what's gonna be charged. The low rent is no longer an option and uh, they're forced to move away from the area just to retire because they can't afford to live where they worked their whole lives. So that's it, that's my report. The things that I think is, is critical and it comes kind of under, I don't know that it comes so much under housing as daycare, adult Maybe daycare, mm -hmm. because that would be a tremendous help to everybody. And right now, I think we have maybe one here in town. I don't know of any. Yeah, it's at the Lutheran Church. And it's, uh, it's called the Gate Post or something like that. So I think that we experience that ourselves, but I think that that's something that needs to really be looked at. You know, when I listen to this, that's good information, good report. I just feel overwhelmed, you know. Tell me about it. You, you sit there and talk like to people. Mm -hmm. It's exactly what you feel like. Think you said. It's, I just what listened to this. Man. What, what, what are we going to do? Not, just, you know, uh, just my reaction is uh, <clears> that <throat> I, I don't honestly know how much that we as, as a board can do in the, in the whole scheme of things. Wait. Except, um, you know, direct people to the proper sources if your resource specialists are already are already doing that. They they know the resources in the community. And so I, I don't. Know, I'm frustrated. Yes, ma'am. I think that that um, information gathering is the value that this board brings. Um, you know, some of those things were. Um, useful to um, some ideas that I've been thinking about, not just in the context of seniors particularly, but a problem and one of the reasons that rents are going, you know, are pegging at the top of what the market will bear is because rental, single family rental properties are the latest venture capital target. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so um, I've been thinking about policy changes that Longmont can make um, that would discourage corporate buyers from investing in Longmont. Now, it's illegal to just pass a statute that says uh, outside corporate investors can't buy our houses. Mm -hmm. You know, there are there are federal laws that say you can't do that. Um, but uh, deed restrictions are a tool, and so perhaps if the city offered favored financing. Um, that came with deed restrictions um, so that either local local landlords or local homeowners could um, could get money from the city to improve their property and then if they sold the property it would come with a deed restriction that says you have to be either owner occupied or you have to be a resident of Longmont if you're the landlord and uh, that's legal so um, information of that sort, situational stuff that we can capitalize on to um, 
make policies that would that would tend to depress rents and keep things local are something that we can that that we as people who experience and talk to people who are experiencing these problems that's a big deal and and Lonnie I think you know in, in your talk you you have several more points of oh this is a way we could stick a deed restriction to that property because it does not hurt a senior who wants to stay in the house to have a deed restriction it may hurt their children but you know what <laughs> those kids are growing you around to worry about it yeah like, yes. <laughs> well most of right now with affordable and attainable housing if the place is sold does it not have to still remain in affordable and attainable that's what and, a deed restriction does yeah and but isn't that being looked at in some instances as they're not putting a deed restriction on some of those and well there's uh, I say I'm using deed restriction a little bit loosely first of all so deed restriction has a really precise meaning and there are other um, other ways of, of, of attaching conditions to what happens to the property um, you know so income qualification uh, to take over either to buy or to become the next renter um, you know that, that you have to be income qualified for this amount of time um, and often we call it a deed restriction because it you know the city has a lien of some sort on it so that it comes past the administrative stuff because you know I could rent my upstairs and there's no there's no statutory transaction at all mm -hmm. um, but uh, but if there's a lien on the property then there is so um, I, does that answer yeah, your question? It just seems to me that what I'm seeing is that mm -hmm. okay so I bought, bought an affordable house mm -hmm. I have to sell that at an affordable price but the next person in there may not have to abide by that may have the option to go market value at that point so then we aren't doing affordable housing into perpetuity we're doing affordable housing to a certain point and then uh, those are things i've seen talked about and i'm just wondering how do we keep it affordable <laughs> right and attainable in those right positions? yeah so the the city is really just dipping its toe into attainable housing and most of our affordable housing is rental so you know that's a lot easier because mm -hmm. it has to stay in the affordable has to stay income qualified that's easier with rentals um, but yeah we're, we're now discussing that um, and I don't think that that there's a huge amount of, of settled statutes mm -hmm. right now and honestly I'm not entirely sure so um, if you'd like a review a report that I can come back another time, but I don't have it in the top of my head. Lonnie? I just want to say, too, when we've approached people to talk to them, we've let them know that we are information gathering. We just want to find out as much information as we can. And being the type of person I know I am, it's very frustrating because I can't look at say, something and say, okay, let's head in this direction to solve this. Let's try to figure out ways to solve this. This is such a bigger issue. Yes. We're not looking to solve, you know, to solve issues. We're not even looking to make recommendations. We're looking to fact find, and we're looking to put a good, comprehensive list together of the things that we find um, are needed in Long Run or the problems in Long Run. When I was speaking to the senior center resource specialists, they all said the same thing. They end up putting people on waiting lists, and it's very frustrating to them because they can't always get someone into a place immediately when they need one. It's very rare for them to be able to do that. They have to go through the process. And what I'm starting to think is, let's find out how we could make that process shorter. You know, we can do something. Let's find out if there is anything. But we are fact finding and we've told them that, you know, our idea is just to find out all the different areas of housing, not just affordable but all the different areas of housing here in Long Run and, uh, and then be a good source of information, if nothing else. Okay, uh, my, you know, my next question is going to be, what, what are you planning next? You just answered the question. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, um, Marsha, you were talking about federal restrictions on what can be done. And that was something that um, 
pay at the um, affordable housing section. So she said, there are some financial assistance programs for housing that are federal. Um, I assume federally funded, but also under federal regulations. And she said, if we could find a way to do that at the state level or even the local level, that would give them more freedom to help people in the local community. But with federal oversight or federal rules to follow, it's very difficult to do, you know, to be creative and to move quickly to solve immediate problems in, in our city. So that's something we're looking at. Okay, so we'll look forward to another report next oh, month. Sure, yes. Uh, with the additional facts. Uh, Arlene, do you, do you have any more you want to add to last month's um, work? Just, just a couple of things. I won't okay. take long because we're running out of time. Um, the microtransit bus, I think, is something that we still need to continue to advocate for um, as far as it being available for not only CU but also uh, low-income towns or anybody in town. And it does need to be uh, reasonably priced. I missed the first part. Micro transit oh. bus. Okay. Um, and I think we're still looking at 2024 for that to start. So any way that we can, if we can advocate for the city to say, okay, you can write for a dollar, you can write for two dollars, or you can write free, which would be wonderful. Um, I think we need to advocate on that. Um, as far as cross lights go for people trying to go across, I have noticed, and I've never noticed this before, but I noticed it that it's all traffic stops, and then the light turns to the little person before traffic goes again. And I thought, you know, that's kind of neat because it gives you the chance to start going across the street before traffic gets going. So I had not noticed that. I noticed that at some of the street lights. Yeah. You saw it there. Okay. Because yeah. that is really, that is really neat. So I've, I've seen that. That's more user friendly. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, street sign, of course, you know, that's going to be forever, I guess. The train board, of course, still, you know, advocate for quiet zones. Um, and getting getting people to city services, how can we do that? Now, I thought about something, and I thought if we could find volunteer drivers, and we could find a volunteer bus. So what this is, and you guys weren't here last week, last time, we have people that ask us, how can we get to some of these city events that go on in the summertime, on the weekends, when there's no buses available, you know, as far as VIA doesn't do it, and, and all that, and RTD probably doesn't know where they are. And so if we could get, and I know some of the drivers for VIA, if they would be willing to say volunteer their time to do this, could we get a bus? Could we get a senior center bus or a recreation bus or something? And pick the people up at some of the different places, take them to these and pick them up again. So that's just something I've, I've been, I've been thinking um anyway that's that's pretty much where let's I'm at. Yeah, let's let's pursue that a little more next next year. Okay. okay. Yes, Tom. Didn't we discuss that kind of at the last we meeting? Had a little and yeah. then okay. saying that the fact that the recreation bus and the senior services bus really were no were not an option. Not available for that. Right. Mm -hmm. the, 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 Jeff said that you guys were going to look into that. For, for the city city um, vehicles to be operated, they have to be operated by city staff. Could we, could we volunteer? So you're saying the city staff could not volunteer their services that day? They would. It would just have to be city staff that they would be a um, via staff members in your in your Right. Role. Okay. It would have to be a city staff member. Yeah. Okay. That's a hard you have to ask city staff members to volunteer their time. There would be hoops to jump through to do yeah. you know, you do a lot of it. Well, you know, you've got a lot of specific suggestions here mm -hmm. already. Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. We can work with. Okay. So, I I, so excuse me, David. I'm, I'm sorry, but I just <laughs> want this back here. Yes. So, we've got a couple of transit organizions um, in black is the one that comes to mind. Right. So there's private. Right. Um, so uh, it might be worth approaching them mm -hmm. 
to see if they would volunteer a bus and a driver for um, you know some sort of consideration like at free advertising to go. Right. Um, <coughs> you know, yeah. are you finished? Yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. No. Um, they donate buses at, at the end of every year, and the buses that they turn over, mm -hmm. they donate them to organizations too. I've seen where there's a call for people to uh, to uh, apply, apply and to have another, you know, apply for another organization to recommend another organization. So they are civic minded and they are community minded. So that may be an option that I well, not use their, their services, but that is something that I thought of always then. Uh, mm -hmm. Because their drivers would be qualified. Rodney. Uh, at our last meeting, I said, uh, between you and I, I said, you deserve more time for the manager's report. And here I am again. That's okay. That's okay. You, you got seven minutes. <laughs> and that's Time's said, yours. And that's why I said that the whole purpose of A lot of this we've talked about. Right. Exactly. Yeah. We cover a lot of these organically. Um, and that's why I, I'm okay putting it out in advance. Everybody has a chance to view it. That's why I was opening it up because I didn't have any questions on one. And if not, then I kind of just hit some key points. So I'm okay with seven to 10, 15 minutes. Okay. <laughs> because the report is out there for, you know, to you, you read at your own convenience as well. Um, and I prefer these conversations, right, versus just um, things like this. So we do have a, a posted uh, a part-time position for an office assistant. Um, Becky Miller, Rebecca Miller has uh, resigned her position. So if uh, Becky was with us for, and helps us out, I, if I had a putting average on it, 10 hours a week, or I'm sorry, 10 hours a month um, for her regular scheduled shifts to cover our staff meetings. Um, and if somebody's out or taking vacation time, she's able, we're able to plan her, uh, schedule her to come in and cover. Uh, so she resigned her position uh, for her own reasons. And um, so we've posted that position that's up right now. So we're looking to fill that vacancy. And um, We'll be posting our new recreation program position within the next week or so. Um, uh, as we were discussing, the hope is to have it posted here within the next week or so to set up interviews for the in December. So we have all of November to have this this posted this position posted. But hoping we find a quality candidate. We're not going to rush it. You know, uh, we'll be exact, just like all of our our my hires that we've made. They've been very intentional, but we're hoping that we have a you know a good pool of qualified candidates to interview. December with the hope of a January we set a start date. Do you post your positions internally within the city first or you do everything simultaneous externally and, and externally and internally? So it's on city website we check with that. So it's available to everybody. Right. Right. Um, we have set up uh, advisory board interviews on November 7th. Uh, Lonnie and Art will be uh, be participating in our interview process with Jeff and I. So November seventh is this identified date and times for uh, five five applicants. Wow, lottery. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's uh, five applicants to fill four positions. Art, Art, Art. Did you say that? Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so we'll be helping out with the interview process and. Uh, as for our friends board, I'm currently working with our with our friends board to identify our uh, 2024 budget. So they give me our dollar amounts on just identifying the line items and what uh, monies were allocated to those line items. Uh, pre presented that to the um, uh, executive board last Friday, going to the November meeting uh, to present to the whole board, had a whole board reveal, and then we moved into the December where they'll vote. Final, on finalizing that, that budget. Let's see. Oh, and at some point in time, um, um, we will be addressing the heat mitigation report. So we don't have that right now, but we'll be addressing that very, very near, near future. Right. Thank you for forwarding that to me, by the way. I did talk to Zach about it, and uh, it's going to be uh, there's going to be more available. Mm -hmm. That's that nice. was another. Complex and complicated. It is complicated, yes. Um, as mentioned, we're moving. Well, first of all, our, our new bill is out um, for December through February, just came out last week. 
Um, a new feature that our program team has offered in there is the addition of the walk walkability scale. So identifying the uh, level of difficulty for each trip, something that has not been featured in our tools before, <coughs> that allows our patrons to who are interested in these specific trips to take a look at it to see uh, if it's uh, um, based off of the amount of momentum and difficulty, and if that's something that they want to register for. You know, so that's a really neat addition into our into our, our bill, and uh, and then also we advertise that we're moving. Trip check into Lashley, Lashley Station starting in December. Um, our programming team already also had the 2024 kickoff program kickoff meeting, and uh, where they started generating ideas uh, for for trips and programs for 2024. So they have a great goal of of uh, um, programming things that have. I mean, of course, they've done some pieces here and there. Um, they, they feel that a lot of our trips have been recycled uh, for an extended period of time and have a goal of introducing close to close to of course taking the ones that are, are really popular trips so we'll say um, uh, black hawk trips right keeping those things consistent but close to 100 um, percent new programs for 2024. they have through their experiences have a plethora of great ideas um, that they've implemented in the past or have seen successful in, in, in different um, with different organizations that they want to bring 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 you know, these opportunities for for our, our center. So they're they're doing that work and already have they're generating those ideas for, for 2024. Again, like bragging on our team and just seeing seeing the direction they're going of where we you know how well we work together. So a lot of fun stuff. And I will open it up if you have any questions or anything on the report. Well, I had sent you an email um, because I was uh, I'm not on the interviewing committee. The, the other board members can have copies of the applications. Is that? I have to look into that one logistically. Um, I don't know if anybody outside of the, even though it's part of our board, yes. outside That's of the um, uh, hiring or the, the, the interviewing committee specifically um, can have access to mm -hmm. those. So I'll look out, I'll look into that and I can get back to you. Yeah, no, I understand that it's not okay to do that. Right. So. I just want to make sure. Yeah. I just want to make sure. Absolutely. And if not, could they, could everybody get a list of names of the people that applied? I have to check that too. the same thing. Right. Yeah. 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 I kind of figured that would be maybe the same question. Are we allowed to publicize that, right? Right. Um, that's why I, I, have yes. to, I have to take a look at that. Okay. I can find out when okay. I go. <clears throat> 10 seconds to say, <laughs> um, you're doing a good job. And you pulled things together. I can see it. You're putting things together very well. Absolutely. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate the support from my, our advisory board. Uh, specifically, it's I, I appreciate the feedback, I appreciate the support, I appreciate the ideas, and um, a lot of great things come out of this group. And I'm very thankful for that. Great. Uh, I Can I just over. say something quick? Oh, I'm sorry. One of the things that I'm really, it caught me was, I'm impressed with the steadiness of what you're doing. The incrementalization idea is just fantastic because you're doing everything slowly and methodically and intentional and it just it it allows everything to be to come out flush everything out as you move it and you're not jumping to decisions and then finding out where you missed the boat or things that you didn't look at or didn't more made aware until after you know you're way ahead of it and so, you're doing things so nicely and clearly and intentionally and I love the incrementalization idea incrementalism incrementalism I love that I think that's fantastic so I want to compliment you on how things are going you talked about how you're doing the slow and steady but to see it in action you know, sometimes you get a little very crap. impressive you get crap sometimes when you start out that way but it works out the best I think Ronnie got his share of crap yeah. <laughs> And, okay. and I appreciate that. Uh, thank you. And I feel one of my greatest strengths and curse at the same time is, is att attention to detail, but being able to evaluate systems and structures to identify areas of improvement for using that that um, that um, 
focusing on the detail mm -hmm. to put it into action. So if I identify you know, overall goals, objectives, and, and timelines, and all of these little details that come into that to see it come to life, um, is, you know, to me, it's, it's a strength that I, I always call it a curse, right? Because I'm always a winner of all those things, right? Um, and um, I, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. It gives me a feeling of confidence to know that if you're doing something, you're handling these things. You're, you're, you're covering these things. It's moving forward. Right. And that, as a new member, it's nice to know that things are being done so, so well. Well, thank you very much. For just a second, I want to go back to the item I added to the agenda, which was elect secretary. And I just wanted to point out we never did. And we have no secretary. And that's because Ronnie uh, and his staff have helped us out as far as keeping minutes. But that's not the only duty of a secretary, although it's just mainly to keep cap, you know, uh, track of you know, correspondence, that kind of stuff. But we probably should know that. But at this late date, we may as well wait until January when we elect mm -hmm. officers. The new members, maybe somebody coming in would like to take that I would that also out. Would like to say, think about if you want to be an officer, you know, president, vice president, secretary. Uh, well, that's open. Okay. So, um, do I have a motion for adjournment? Yes. A motion to adjourn. Okay, is there a second? I second. Okay. Moved and seconded, we adjourn. All in favor, say aye. Aye. aye.